Great. Uh, another area of reform uh, that you have expressed some interest in is, uh, is welfare uh, and uh, uh, also uh, the uh, uh, main care uh, plan for people who rely on main care. Uh, what would be wrong with a copay under the main care program? Why shouldn't we, uh, why shouldn't we require a, a copay as part of the financing package? I don't think there's anything wrong with a copay as long as it's a modest copay and um, it, it, the, uh, the, the funds generated from the copay are used to uh, increase access to health care. I think that's essential. Unfortunately, the, uh, the policy um, from uh, the executive in this state has been to uh, expand main care dramatically to the point where it covers almost 20 percent of the population. And uh, well, it's never designed for that heavy a load. No, main care is, is for the absolutely most needy folks, folks who have no means of earning an income, uh, the elderly, uh, 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 single parents with kids at home, uh, the disabled, folks that are really uh, very much in need have no other avenue for accessing uh, health care or health insurance. And the average across the nation is about 10 percent of the population fits into that category. And we've expanded uh, the definitions in Maine, again, out of uh, uh, a, uh, a well-meaning uh, desire to expand uh, health care coverage, but haven't provided for the means of paying the bills that are generated by the services that, that people go out and seek. So as a result, there are, there are tens of millions of dollars owed to hospitals for the services that they've rendered to folks that are on main care. And um, hospitals have to operate, so they just simply shift those costs and charges to other folks who have, who have other types of health insurance, private health insurance in particular. And that's why people who, who don't have uh, first dollar coverage, like, like me, I, I, I have uh, type 2 diabetes, so I have to go and get these, uh, these tests every so often. Um, a, a blood test costs uh, five, six hundred dollars uh, if you pay for it out of your own pocket. And a lot of this is because of the cost shifts, because some folks are paying nothing and when, when the state should be covering some of that. So, so I think one, that when someone pays nothing, someone else pays twice as much to make up the difference. That's right. In fact, when I sent out my uh, surveys, I sent out surveys to every household uh, in the district, and I got many, many responses. And I had one individual write back to me that, um, uh, that, that they had lost, they, they were covered by main care, and they had lost main care because they'd earned too much money. They, their income had gone up, uh, and uh, so they lost main care. And they said they'd gladly pay uh, a copay or, you know, a, a small deductible on their, the in order to keep the coverage. Absolutely. It's like spreading peanut butter over a piece of toast, a bigger and bigger piece of toast, more thinly and thinly, until uh, there really is no coverage anymore. That's a good analogy. I'll have to remember that <laughs> one. An another issue that is mentioned from time to time is the number of people who relocate to Maine in order to take advantage of the blessings of our very liberal support system. What can we do about people moving into the state and suddenly um, enrolling on the welfare rolls and taking advantage of, of the largesse of Maine taxpayers? First of all, is it a problem or is it just something you hear about in the coffee shop? Well, it certainly is a problem. There's uh, a lot of anecdotal e evidence, certainly, uh, about um, uh, folks coming to Maine in order to uh, qualify for, for assistance. And it's very easy. Um, you come to Maine, you establish a, a residence, uh, show up at the welfare office, and uh, automatically there's no waiting period, there's no residency requirement other than you've, you've, you, you're, you're resident on that day in order to qualify. And um, the result is uh, Maine has become a magnet state, state for people who are seeking out um, uh, richer government benefits. And uh, it is a real stress on our system, and it's unfair to Mainers who are in real need and who, who need the assistance, uh, they're suffering cutbacks because of this stress that's being put on the system. And it's unacceptable. Most states have a 30-day residency requirement. 
um, in every single legislature uh, that uh, that I can think of, there's a bill introduced to introduce to. Uh, ask for a 30-day residency requirement before general assistance can be offered and it's voted down every time and and again this is about um, uh, politicians seeking to do what's uh, generous or popular or um, uh, uh, beneficial to a constituency rather than thinking of the bigger picture and thinking of the of the the, the uh, the best interest of all the people of Maine. Well, and it seems very clear to me that we don't live in a wealthy state. We have many people that have uh, their own needs. And it seems very unreasonable to me that we should be asked not only to take care of Maine as a need, which is just, but also to take care of untold thousands who come here to take advantage of our generosity. Um, it, it doesn't make sense to me, and certainly a 30-day waiting period uh, would be one way to uh, to weed some of that out, it would seem to me. And if someone wants to stay here beyond 30 days, make a commitment to live in Maine, uh, maybe that's different, but not just residency of convenience in order to take advantage of, of the system.